So basically, um, Nina, who is one of the um, like five and like the um, spe like vocational specialist now, um, she signed up with the service and um, because like because we're related and that like basically she um, kind of told me about the service and how it was kind of helping people and she recommended that I sign up for it and um, at first I was a bit reluctant in that because um, usually I don't like to kind of like um, kind of take like kind of get involved with things that I'm like explicitly for people with like neurodevelopment kind of issues and stuff like that because it's yeah. like I've always tried to you know kind of rise like rise above it whenever whenever I'm able to but then I started to think like you know what I've, like the service is there I'm having difficulties with like kind of actually you know kind of hold, like getting work and holding down a job in the field I want so maybe they can help me so Mm. that's kind of when I decided to actually get involved with the service so yeah excellent and what were your first impressions my first impressions were um I really hope that they can do something to help me because um I have had um kind of some exposure to people who are you know kind of um you know um career advisors and stuff like that and usually they don't really take into account some of the the neat the more niche aspects of um yeah. people with like the people on the autistic spectrum trying to find work and also usually they ju they're more involved they're more kind of um they're more kind of worried about people just kind of getting a job whatever mm -hmm. job and then they can tick them off as like a right there that was successful they're done they're off our system ring on the next one well when i signed up um i kind of didn't i ha i the main thing that i was kind of like hoping was like i hope that the similar to what i said i hope that they can help me with what it is i actually need I didn't really have any kind of like expectations going in because as I said I have had people kind of advise me on careers and I have been kind of like um especially through university and college and stuff like that, I've had people kind of like look at my like kind of take a look at career stuff and try to like help out in that way and it wasn't really um good for what I needed but um so I didn't really have any kind of expectations going in because the um, the main thing I was just hoping was that it wouldn't just be another one of those experiences yeah. where I didn't really feel as though it was helpful and then I'd just come away from it. And um, so, yeah, I didn't really. So it was mostly just I hope that this isn't another one of those was the yeah. main impression. That was the main kind of expectation that I had. Like, I hope that it's helpful in some way. So yeah. I didn't really have like a high expectation going in. You haven't got was, a high bar. <laughs> yeah, but that was yeah that wasn't because of, that wasn't because of the nature of the service. It was just because of like um, other time other um, previous occasions before weren't that great. So the bar was quite low for yeah. like what I deem as like a, a successful. So. <laughs> Yes, um, basically, uh, my vocational specialist is Nicole, and she's been she's been brilliant throughout the whole time of being with thriving to thriving to work. Um, she just took um, she took the time to talk to me about what it was I was looking for, what kind of areas I'd be happy with, and um, kind of if there was any kind of additional support that I'd kind of need throughout the whole thing and um we agreed that basically um we'd start off with like um basically um she'd like she'd kind of like look at kind of job opportunities and then kind of like send them to me and initially she did kind of like drip feed them to me like kind of one at a time like well um a couple at a time and then she and then um i remember she actually said like i don't want to send you too many and overwhelm you and I just and then I just said, oh, no, honestly, send me as many as you can. Like, I'm fine. Like, I'm perfectly fine. I'll look through them. I'll kind of weed out what it is that um, I'm not interested in or doesn't really fit my criteria. 
Um, but honestly, just send me as many as you find because you won't overwhelm me. I'm actually, I'm actually, I, that that's kind of one one thing that I'd want is for you to help me find as many job opportunities as possible. And mm -hmm. then they sent more and more like as time went on. At first, it was basically we was looking at kind of software development stuff because I was really interested in kind of getting into that kind of career. Um, and then um, like we'd look at kind of apprenticeships or entry level jobs. And um, initially, like Nicole didn't really know that much about how the software kind of um, industry worked, but she took the time to kind of look at these things and she took the time to kind of learn about um, some terminologies and what it was that I was like the actual fields within that industry that I was at, that I actually had some kind of um, knowledge of or wanted to do, which was already like leagues ahead of any kind of thing that I had before, especially when um, she sent me some jobs and I said, oh, I'm not really interested in this. And she was like, OK, I won't look at those. I won't look at I won't, I won't send you anything like that again. So I was like, well, OK. So again, already leagues ahead of like anything that I'd done before where she took the time to learn what it was I was actually looking for. And then she actually tailored the jobs that she'd send based on what I'd already said before. And then as time went on, like um, some of the job roles kind of shifted. Like initially I said, like, oh, send me some um, stuff for retail because I'm happy doing retail. And, but then over time we dropped looking for retail because it's like I'd be happy doing it, but it's not what I'm aspiring for. So then over time it was more about the software side of things. But then I also said, if you find anything for the um, English teaching and the, e the ESOL roles, then send them to me as well. But I was more kind of geared towards software because I wasn't really getting much luck in the ESOL side of things. So that's what, so that was what, how it kind of started really. So yeah, that's kind of how it rolled on at first. Interest has shifted a considerable bit because during the whole time of looking for software roles, um, through like with Nicole kind of helping me look, it's kind of given me the opportunity to kind of like start weeding out what it is I'm good at and what it is I'd actually want to do. And um, with some of the roles that I applied for, like I wasn't really getting very far, and it was basically because of the um, the the no, I've got no experience in working in a soft in the software industry, and I have um, so much kind of knowledge of particular coding languages. But then the coding languages that I know um, aren't really what a lot of software developers are looking for. And um, so then I found out that there are specific roles for um, the languages that I know, which are quite niche areas, and then. Um, I told Nicole about this and then she started looking at those roles as well. But then um, later on, I actually um, had the opportunity to be interviewed for a apprenticeship, which um, I believe Nicole did kind of tell me about. And um, I, I got the, I got the um, interview for that. I went there, I talked to them. They were really great people. It wasn't that far away from me. Um, but then I, but then when I got, I started walking back and then I started to kind of like really ask some questions. And then it dawned on me that I don't know whether I'd be happy with a um, actual software job within an industry, like within an office, because um, any software, that I've, any software development that I've done, I've done myself mm. I'm all the time. And I'm quite happy doing that. And I thought because I'm happy doing it and I enjoy it, then it would be good for a job. But then I thought that about fine art because I actually have a master's degree in fine art. Um, but, but getting up to that level, I can't stand working in the art industry. Like I, I remember I got to the end of university and I was like, I am done with this. So in my head, I kept thinking, 
will that happen with software? So if I do aspire to a career in software, I feel as though it would be better for me to do that like in a freelance self-employed setting at least to start off with so then i have some exposure to like how the industry works if i ever get the opportunity to see somebody work in an office and work in that kind of environment then if i know what it's like then i may reconsider but at the moment i'm thinking working in an office nine to five like typing out code all day i think that would just be soul crushing and it would just like kill any kind of passion that i have for software so my ideas about my career shifted considerably and it was more about software and then a little bit about esol but now it's solely about no i think teaching is where i should be at the moment and that's kind of where my career aspect should kind of go right now and i don't think um and i think being in thrive into education and having all these opportunities for interviews and various opportunities has kind of helped me realize that that's where i want to be at the moment so Fantastic. yeah so that has helped like considerably there it has um really helped with that like um i think I think I should kind of like um, say that like um, I have been successful in actually finding a role in Happy teaching place. and um, I, it, it was for working in a local college as a lecturer teaching a um, teaching a teaching a class of um, teenagers Fabulous. and that has done great things for me because um, off my own back when I was just looking for work myself some opportunities for ESOL roles came up at the college and I applied for them two or three times before and then I was not successful. They wouldn't even bring me in for an interview. So then the opportunity came up again and um, Nicole went, oh, there's this go in here and I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, I don't really have that much experience in ESOL. Uh, like I have some experience in ESOL, but it's like, oh, I'm looking for way more experience than I have. Um, it's for teaching teenagers and only have and I, I, I mostly know about teaching adults and not teenagers so you know I don't know they've, they've turned me down two or three times before I don't know whether it's worth it but then Nicole went well at least try at least put your name down if you don't get it then at least you know that you gave it a go but then if you do then that'll be fantastic but you won't get anything if you don't at least put your name down for it and then I thought you know what okay I don't think it will really do anything and I think I'm not expecting much of it but I'll at least give them a, a, I'll at least make the application and then that's that and then I'll get a, I'll get a I'll get a letter of um I'll get like an email saying I wasn't successful and then I could be like right well at least I tried but then oddly enough they invited me for an interview and I was like, okay, fair enough. Um, that surprised me of all the ones before. This is the one. All right, um, I'll go for the interview. I'm not going to expect, again, I'm not going to expect much of it. I just, I had no expectations. I wasn't like, oh, this is fantastic. I was just, no, I've been there before. No. Yeah. And then I went to the interview and I, find, and I found out that I was one, one of five people who was invited but then it was only me and another person because the other three um didn't turn up basically oh, so it was wow. literally between me and one other guy and the other guy who i was um interview that who was also interviewing um he had worked in um secondary schools he had a pgce He'd worked abroad. Well, I've worked abroad. I've um, taught English abroad as well, but he had way many. He had a lot of years of experience, like leagues ahead of me, like in a lot. And then I thought, well, he seems like the obvious choice. You know, if he gets it, I'd completely understand. But that's that. So again, I had no expectations going forward. I did the best in the interview. I gave it my all, and I thought, well regardless of what happens i can look back and say i got shortlisted for this 
Yeah. Which is way more than what I ever had before when it came to um, doing this role. Um, I have taught English in the UK, and but it was literally a couple weeks of doing cover lessons for a company in Birmingham. And then that was it. And then they brought me on with the idea that I would be a permanent member of the team. But then stuff kept coming up and then they said, oh, yeah, we've given the role to somebody else. Um, we wanted to bring you on as cover, but then we've given the job to like um, a couple other people. And then it ended up like, oh, we don't have anything for you. Like mm -hmm. you experience, like the, the experience that you've got and um, all this stuff, it's, you know, we don't have anything for you. If anything comes up, we'll let you know. But then I thought, oh, OK, well, you've you've been pushing me and pulling me different directions for a couple yeah. of years. So after that experience of thinking, oh, I'm going to get a job out of this. And then it, everything being it went from, oh, yeah, we want you as a permanent member of the team. OK, no, but we want you as a but we want you to teach this class. OK, no, we've given that to somebody else, but then we can bring you on as a cover. So if anybody is off, then you yeah. can teach there, then you can teach their classes. Okay, no. All right, we don't have anything for you. After that experience, it was like, okay, well, I don't think ESOL is really the mm. direction I'm supposed to go because I keep hitting brick walls of it, like all the time. And um, so basically, um, I went to the interview. I thought, well, because especially after the experience I had before, I thought, well, at least mm. I've been shortlisted to work in a college. Mm. It's fantastic. And then I wasn't really expecting anything, but then later on I got a phone call and I thought, oh, here it is, the, the phone call saying, rejection oh, yeah, 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 like, well, you know, it's a, it's a yeah. call. But then they called me up and they said, oh, we'd like to offer you the job. And I was like, oh my, oh my God, thank you very much. And then I hung up the phone and then I got really emotional and I started kind of like crying a little bit. <laughs> Um, it's a real confidence boost isn't it when you, was, when you get that that was an amazing confidence booster especially yeah. because ever since because i um i i i lived in a i lived in spain about three years ago and then three years ago when i moved back to the uk i, I remember look finding out that dudley college had an esol department where they teach english to foreign nationals i thought i would love to work there that would be the ideal role for me. I live less than a mile away from the campus. Yeah. Local. Um, I like I know the role, I know the job, and that would be fantastic. Yeah. And working in a college, there'd be some security there. That would be amazing. So the fact that I got offered it, the only thing that's happened lately that hasn't been great is that I've still I've been tied up in um basically the recruitment process because mm -hmm. Um, I've had a lot, I've had one, I had one um, reference that was taking ages to mm -hmm. get back and it was with Game and the company and the corporation Fraser's group, which they took, they took ages to actually respond to several yeah. requests for emails, which, uh, which bothered me. But then now because um, I've worked, I worked in Spain three years ago it falls within that um, five year gap of a DBS check. So then, wow. I, so now I've had to request a DB, uh, DBS check from Spain. So I've had to, I've had to post an application to Spain to get a, oh. a criminal record check from oh them. Yeah. So that will take a while knowing the, knowing Spanish bureaucracy. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that all take a little while. So that's another waiting thing. So I've had to, I've kept them updated the whole time. They've been very patient with me. They haven't said, oh well, don't bother then, you know, stuff like that. They've, they've really kind of kept with me with the whole thing, and that was that's been fantastic. Excellent. Um, yeah. So, um, but now, um, now basic. So um, yeah, to answer your original question. Um, it has done amazing things for my confidence um, going forward and it has kind of reassured me that I have way more value than I initially thought with the SL role because I thought, oh, I'm not really getting anywhere. Oh, this, you know what, I may as well give up. I'm not really doing it. The fact that I got offered this job from a college is like, that's brilliant. That's fantastic. Like, it makes me feel, it makes me feel like I can 
basically, you know, accomplish anything I've set my mind to as long as I, you know, really push forward and, and persist. Yeah. With it. So it has done amazing things. And also um, the, the idea of actually um, having somebody who regularly checks up on me and actually kind of asks me how the job roles are going or how the job hunting's going. Um, somebody who I can keep updated on this whole thing about the recruitment process has been absolutely brilliant. Like it has kind of, um, it's kind of helped me keep on track with things because if it was just me um, going for this, I think I basically would have just like, either I would have passed up a lot of opportunities or I definitely would have passed up this um, opportunity at Dudley College because I would have thought, well, as similar to what I said, they've already turned me down twice or three times before. Yeah. I may as well not bother. So it's been fantastic kind of keeping me on mm -hmm. track and helping me get this opportunity to boost my confidence because I wouldn't have had this opportunity if um, Nicole didn't say, just um, go for it. You've got nothing yeah. to lose. And she's been providing you with some support since you've had your offer, um, which is fantastic. That so it's that helped you, yeah. and you know, to to know that that support's there is that a has big, been, big help. That has been fantastic. Yeah, like um, so especially with the re like with the whole reference debacle. Like I had um, Dudley College chasing them up. I was chasing it myself. Um, I got my the store that I worked in the chase it up. But then I also had Nicole chasing them up as well. So I had a lot of people trying to help me get this reference and Nicole yeah. was one of them. And that was also fantastic. But it's just nice to know that there's somebody there who's fighting your corner. Yes. And it's not just you trying to like push for all this stuff yourself. It was yes. exactly the same when it came to when I was trying to get roles in the um, in the software development thing. There was a couple of companies that I wanted to talk to them about and see what kind of um, see what kind of um, person that they wanted and what kind of um, skills and experience that they'd like. Mm -hmm. And Nicole was really kind of helping me try to get in touch with these people because there was one company where there wasn't really a phone number for them, but it was only a customer service line. So she was trying to basically I was trying to contact them one way. And she was trying to help and she was trying to contact them a different way. So we had like a kind of a double kind of pronged yeah. attack, let's yeah. say, to try to like find this information from this company. So she has been really fantastic, like with the support that she's given me and like trying to actually help me get get as far as I have, really. So it's been brilliant. Yes, I, I would. I would definitely say it was worthwhile. Like, definitely. Like, I, as as I've said, like I feel as though the opportunity that I've had now, I wouldn't have had if it wasn't for Nicole kind of pushing me to get there. So, um, and like I said, and as I've said, like having someone to talk to to kind of help keep you on track, to help you find work, to offer assistance in any way they can. It's just it's it makes you it makes it feel it it helps you feel as though it's like it's not just you against the world that there is somebody who's fighting your corner and is there to kind of like push you in any way that you need like whether it's just somebody to give whether it's just someone to update every now and again whether it's someone who's actively helping you whether it's somebody just to kind of talk to a company and just kind of help get some information or just to kind of like find out why they either rejected you or if there's anything else that you could have done to get to get the role yeah. is just a, a brilliant thing to have especially for especially for people with the neurodevelopment things or you know the autistic spectrum any anything that you kind of have like in that regard it's just brilliant to have somebody like that there for you so i would wholeheartedly recommend it to anybody who'd need it.